I'm Dan Schabell, Managing Partner of Workplace Intelligence, and in this series, I talk to leaders about their perspectives on hybrid work. My guest today is Makita Mikado, CEO of PandaDoc, an all-in-one software that is used to create, deliver, and e-sign business documents. Makita, it's great to have you here. Thank you, Dan. Why did PandaDoc originally decide to be a remote company, and how is that decision impacting you? Uh, we've always uh, been a partial remote company. Um, I, met, I moved to the U.S. Um, eight years ago uh, to start PandaDoc out of Belarus. Um, and uh, we didn't really have a choice. Uh, we were looking to build a product for a global market. And while um, at the time, there was a lot of technical talent uh, that we benefited from in Belarus, um, there were not that many people doing marketing and sales uh, globally. So we wanted to um, move to the land of uh, tech holy grail uh, to Silicon Valley to work with the best people, to find the best people and uh, launch the company. So um, my co-founder stayed in Belarus. I moved to the US, I moved to San Francisco. And uh, we've been collaborating and working together um, across the time zones, across the oceans. And uh, um, we had to learn to do it. Um, and then uh, early on in the, pan in the pandemic, we run a survey among uh, our employees to see how they felt about uh, the switch to remote and uh, found out that most supported uh, going remote. Uh, most uh, were looking to do that actually. Uh, so we decided to pull the trigger. And uh, 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 when the pandemic started, have gone all remote. Yeah, it just seems that, you know, you did the right thing without knowing that your employees would actually like it. But it was smart to do a survey to yeah, just we, ensure that they were happy yeah. with their new work situation that maybe some weren't used to before. Yeah, yeah. We ran the survey. Uh, people responded that uh, that's what they want to do. And, uh, so we did. Uh, we, we, we have gone uh, full remote. But like I said, prior to that, we had an office in Belarus. We had... Um, a couple of offices in the U.S. and uh, those offices had to learn to uh, work through tools like Zoom and um, Slack and some support. Um, so we had. How, how long do you think that adjustment? Of, how long adjustment? do you think that adjustment period was? Uh, I don't think we really had an adjustment period. Um, since we've gone full remote, there's been a lot of adjustment on a like for every employee on a personal level because um, all of a sudden you have to change your routine, you have to adjust the way uh, you communicate. Uh, you have you have to, and, and you're just you know sitting all by yourself in your house or apartment. Um, so there's like there there's a lot of switch that goes uh, into that, but as a company, we've not really changed the way we operate. We still relied on the same processes, the same artifacts, uh, the same tools. Um, so I wouldn't say there's been a lot of change for the company. What would you say were the, some of the biggest obstacles to becoming a remote first company? And how did you overcome them? Uh, the biggest obstacle, I think, has been um, every employee's um, well-being and and just um, emotional uh, emotional well-being. The reason why is because um, for many of us, work is a very important part of our our social life as well. We interact with people um, at the office and uh, uh, what they call uh, 
water cooler conversations, uh, those are important. Uh, and uh, it's hard to do that over Zoom or uh, it's hard to, to do that over a, uh, over a chat and Slack or whatever. How do you ensure uh, that you still have those water cooler conversations? Though? Yeah. Uh, so how, how have we overcame those? Um, we uh, started boosting and, and started investing in uh, some of the grassroots initiatives that we had at the time. Uh, there's been a um, like a competition over Slack where uh, people, um, like the, the team, divided into small groups and uh, uh, we uh, basically counted the number of uh, exercises that each team uh, posted within a Slack channel. You, you do a run and you take a photo uh, of yourself after the run or uh, of, a, of a run tracking app or you go surfing, you take a photo of you, know, you getting in the water and you post on that channel. So the team that exercised the most uh, won. The team that exercised the least had to do a 5K run. Um, and uh, like it's 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 a way to do something that's not work and do something socially and to see each other uh, as human beings um, uh, at that work. Uh, so that was like one of the things that was going on during the pandemic. Uh, I think it still is actually. Um, then we started, uh, we um, instrumented a mental health budget uh, that allowed everyone to uh, have a budget for things like therapy, uh, coaching. Uh, and I think that that's been very impactful. Uh, we've heard a lot of um, a lot of good feedback on that, a lot of praise on that. Uh, and then once people started getting their vaccinations, we've uh, had a few get-togethers um, that were in person within different teams. At this point, like the company is pretty large to do, the, the, to do a gathering for the entire company, but uh, we had a few get-togethers and uh, those were... Um, Pretty cool, pretty fun. Um, people were able to meet in person, connect in person, talk. Um, beyond that, there are a lot of other initiatives, like uh, uh, some teams organized uh, whiskey nights during the pandemic when, uh, where they had uh, drinks over Zoom. Uh, some other teams uh, organized uh like um, gaming nights where they played some games with each other online. Um, there were cooking classes. Like there, they basically, uh, we were trying to organize social events that were still remote, um, but um, brought people together um, out of work con uh, out of the context of work. Yeah, as you were saying, we spend a third of our lives working, a third of our lives not working, and a third of our lives asleep. So if, if we don't like our jobs or we have poor working relationships, that's going to affect our whole lives, not just work. And I find that a lot of, of leaders such as yourself are encouraging more social activity in and out of the workday in order to ensure that people stay connected and get to know each other on a human level. Yeah, yeah. It's very hard to, uh, to do better than um, organizing events and meetings in person. But uh, um, you can maybe get halfway there. And uh, in some cases, that's, that's good enough, especially when like, you're dealing with a, uh, a global pandemic. Definitely. And can you describe your unique work culture and what companies can learn from it? Um, we value transparency. Um, as it fosters trust. Um, and there are four core values that we try to, uh, we try to invest in, we try to follow. Uh, those are learning, um, making a positive impact, 
or people that surround you, uh, having fun, and then being empathetic, empathetic to customers, to fellow uh, co-workers, and so on and so forth. So learning, impact, fun, and empathy, those are the four. Um, and uh, when it comes to you know, each one of those, we try to build different programs and uh, uh, try to um, basically invest in ensuring that we, love, we, we live up to those values. Um, that's, I think that's how we uh, we're different. Um, Cause like we're very, very particular about what is that we want to invest in and uh, how, um, how we want to do that. Do you find that it is more challenging to communicate and promote those values and measure those values when you're working remote versus in person? Um, no, I don't really find that. Um, thanks to the emergence of uh, different tools that, that can be found online and I think so much is doable. Um, and uh, while you may not get, you know, as I mentioned before, um, you may not get to the level of connection you get to um, with uh, in-person meetings and events and so on and so forth. Um, you can do a lot of different things that, um, could be done remotely or over over internet. So, you meant, yeah, uh, I, and you mentioned a lot of the ways you connect socially with like your you know happy hours and social events that occur remotely and that have been successful in building team relationships. Are there any? Is there anything else that you do when it comes to building collaboration and camaraderie with teammates outside of that? We try to. Um, as we're switching from like the just kind of social connection to towards uh, connecting on what is that we're doing, uh, we try to embrace transparency and uh, pretty much share almost everything within within the company within the team. Uh, be that like data or intentions or plans, and you name it. So. Um, that helps to build a lot of context so that people within PandaDoc know what is that they're doing, or, you know, as I hope, people within uh, PandaDoc know, um, always know what they're doing, why they're doing, and uh, uh, like what's going to uh, come out of it, or what do we want to come out of this, like, kind of project or campaign or work or you name it. Um, so like being transparent and trying to invest in context, um, I think that could be like, I think that's, that's one of the ways uh, that you can use to make remote uh, work fun. Um, yeah, compared to, to in-person execution. And what were you saying before you were, you were talking about how you surveyed your team when you went full remote and they said they liked remote work, but are there any complaints that they have when it comes to this way of working? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'm, ha I'm happy to share with you the stats. Um, as we've gone fully remote, uh, I believe uh, the first few surveys were showing that Actually, like most people, like like 70, 75% were supportive of the move. Then it start, started to slide down as people um, started to feel isolated and, uh, you know, loneliness is, is, is hard. Um, we're social animals. So then it shifted to basically 50-50. In terms of like who wanted to go back to the office and who wanted to remain um, uh, remote, and now um, we got about 
third uh, folks that want to uh, be just completely remote and remain more remote indefinite. We have about a third that want to go back into the office, and we have about a third that um, are the advocates uh, of this uh, hybrid approach, where uh, they do want to go to the office maybe once a week, maybe twice a week, but they don't want to go to the office every day. Um, so it's kind of like it, it slided um, after what a year and a half now uh, to basically third, third, and third. Yeah, no, that's basically our research confirms that too. Is that's how people want to spend their time, and that's about the percentage of where people or, or the type of environment people want to have during the work day and work week. Because of that, you think that you know post COVID or when we enter this new normalcy, you will have some offices. We will, yeah, we will. Although smaller ones compared to what we used to have pre COVID. No big corporate um, headquarters, more satellite offices. Yeah, more satellite offices. And uh, probably, um, I, I don't envision us going into downtown areas, into the uh, uh, skyscrapers and trying to uh, basically have, you know, an office that looks corporate and so on and so forth. But, like the offices we'll have will be optimized for the social connection versus for um, getting the work done, which might seem to be like, which might sound counterintuitive. However, uh, what we found out is like what we found is that um, with a remote team with people located in different areas of the world, the work get the work gets done over internet. Anyways, like it, it gets done over uh, documents and spreadsheets and then Zoom and then Slack and then project management systems and then you name it. Uh, but what's missing is this like social connection and social interaction. Therefore, um, I'm thinking that um, our office strategy is going to be built around that, around ensuring that people can get together, share their ideas. Um, uh, spend time together and just become friends, you know. Um, and then once that's done, they can um, continue getting the work done over over internet. That makes perfect sense to me. You have a purpose for why people would use the office, which is more of the socialization, maybe brainstorming as well, and coming up with new ideas to unleash their creativity. But we all know that people can also get their job done at home or yeah. from a, a third place, like a, you know, a coffee shop. And so that's already been proven over the past two years. And so I think that you're building real intention about, you know, who gets to work where and why. And I think that's a huge part of how co all companies right now are thinking about the future is what's your intention for this meeting? What's your intention for having an office? Don't just have it to have it have some purpose behind it. And given everything that you've experienced so far and your plans for the future, what's your best advice to a company that's looking to transition to either hybrid or full remote? Um, I think the, the number one reason why this transition has not been painful for our company uh, was that um, we embraced transparency and we tried our best, like we invested a lot in building context and ensuring that uh, people have uh, things like written strategy, things like for the year um, and you know for the next few years. Uh, there's clarity on what our mission and vision is, uh, are. Um, there's clarity on what Pandadoc's culture code is. Uh, there's clarity on where do we stand in terms of the progress towards uh, annual goals. Um, what our objectives and key results are for the quarter. Uh, I believe that having all that ready and um, internalized 
before you go remote um, creates this kind of like safety net uh, to fall back on once the in-person interaction is gone. So I, I think that um, I think that helped us, and I think uh, it's not unique to PandaDoc. I think it's pretty universal across the board. What you're really saying is you need documentation, you need programs and policies and everything intact, because regardless of how your organization evolves, you'll have something to look towards. You'll have something to point to as you you know, recruit new employees who wouldn't know any better. Not just new, but like for existing employees, uh, it's important to know what is that we're doing and why without asking the girl or the guy sitting like right next to you. Exactly. They can just go to one source and, or, mm -hmm. you know, other people, you know, can just tell them or remind them because again, like part of building that work culture for this new normalcy is communication and being transparent and open about what's going on in the organization, what the expectations are. Yeah. Yeah. And, and what do you think the future is for remote or hybrid work? Uh, well, I don't expect it to get um, any smaller. I mean, I think uh, it's supposed to grow uh, this type of like, this type of working uh, work environment is, is supposed to grow and uh, only gain popularity. Um, so, I it's not, I, I it's not like people weren't working like this two years ago. It's just now it's been fully embraced because productivity yeah, increased. Yeah. It didn't decrease during COVID. And it's only going to scale into like more industries beyond tech. And uh, I'm sure we're going to see that. Uh, in the areas like government, you know, or uh, um, actually any professional services, why not? What's well, more efficient, it's uh, more convenient, it makes more sense. Uh, so yes, I, I expect remote to grow. Um, I don't expect like offices to disappear and uh, um, I don't expect um, the like that everyone is going to transition to remote uh, but then I have to it's just that and it's just that you know like it's it's enough to decrease the number of people going from suburb uh, suburbs to the downtown by like 50 percent in order to get rid of traffic that's good enough that's a great result, you know? Uh, so, so yeah, I think, uh, I think we'll make a lot of progress and, uh, I hope that it will be, there'll be a lot less traffic. It's that I agree. And then it's also, you're better able to compete for talent that wants more flexibility and it lowers costs. If you don't, you don't need a, you know, a headquarters with like 5,000 people in it anymore. In fact, that's probably yeah, a like safe thing to do. If you think about it, like it helps, it helps the humanity in general because it lowers our uh, carbon footprint. It uh, increases uh, um, some people's happiness. Um, like, you know, those that enjoy working, I love working remotely. Uh, those that enjoy working remotely, uh, you know, that's good for them. Uh, those that don't, like don't have to do it. So um, I think it's it's a great option. I think uh, that the humanity is uh, only going to win, and uh, I hope that uh, you know we'll embrace it and continue to 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 grow. That's a great future outlook. Thank you so much for sharing your perspectives, Nikita. My pleasure. Thank you, Dan.